Hello guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In the last video, we showed you this Scott Addict getting hits candy coat and the marble effect. And I promised that I would show you how we do the gold leaf logos. So it's quite complex and it takes a long time to do and we've been really busy. So I have done a few, as you can see. We've got a few done already, but I'm gonna take you in the spray booth now and show you how we do it with just the head badge. Right, we're in the spray booth now, um, and we're gonna do the head badge on this Scott edit. Um, the customer is not going for a traditional Scott S logo on this frame. He's a train driver and he's passionate about his job. So he wants this British Railways logo as his head badge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint this logo as you can see it here. And then we're gonna do the gold leaf effect where the line is. And this little red pin striping stage that'll be done after the next lacquer. So I'm gonna get on and you can watch us do that. So first of all, I'm going to put on some tape that will give us a guide to the centre of the head tube. Some logos aren't in the centre, some are high, some are low, but the Scott logos are centre, so we shall keep that the same. We have several pre-made stencils that Bex did earlier. This is our first stencil. And what we'll do with this is, if this was all paint and this was going in gold paint, we would be painting it as we go, but I'm gonna mask the line off. And we're gonna paint the lower bit first, which is the main railway logo. I always, take my guides off in the final stage of line it up because if you've got them slightly crooked it will throw off your mask that you're putting on because it just messes with your eyes so once we're happy press this down hard Quite a lot going on in this logo so we made it as big as we possibly could and it would look nice on the headstock <clears throat> becky cuts little um, alignment holes in logos like this so when we put uh, the next logo on you can see we have these little spots and they line up with the spots here so that when you overlay a stencil upon stencil, you get it all in the right place. And mask around the logo. Any painter will tell you that no matter how well you mark, you always seem to manage to get some overspray somewhere. It's mind boggling sometimes, but you've got to do everything you can to stop that actually happening. So always over mask. Never think that'll do. Always do that a little bit more just in case. It's easier to stop the paint going where it shouldn't than it is cleaning the paint after it's got there. So we're not gonna paint the line at this stage. We're gonna leave him in that 
base coat, but we are going to paint the bottom half of this logo. So we mask the line off at this stage. And we almost always start our logos with the lightest colour first. So in this instant, it's very easy. We're going to paint the white first. So basically what I'm doing at the moment is just giving the white bottle some blowback pressure just to mix the white up because it's sat over the weekend so ideally we do not want any spits of paint. So you see the bubbles blowing away in there mixing the paint up with the thinners that are in it. It would help if it was the right, right, white, right, white. It wasn't, unfortunately. It was a pearl white. Let's do it with this one. It's much better. Okay, so I'm now going to airbrush this. Isn't quite right. In the white. We always put the paint on as thin as we possibly can. The less build up of white, or less build up of paint you get, the better. Less of a ridge you have to lose when you're doing the latter stage. Make sure you've got a nice solid covering. And then we'll give that about two minutes to dry off and we'll give it another coat. So I'm just going to pause you for a second. So we'll just give this its second coat of white. To make it pure white, make sure we've got the coverage we need. Look at that. Doesn't half annoy a painter when a tiny bit of black blows in there. Let's hope that that is under some black as we go through the stages of this stencil. Right, so we've got the white nice and solid now. Um, we're ready to go on with the next stage. So we have to peel off our masking tape so that we can reveal the little holes that we're using for lining up our stencils. There you go. We've exposed our holes. And the second stencil is for the red. Now, because we're going to do the line in gold leaf, we're not going to use the red stage that Becky has cut on here just yet. We're going to paint the red area here 
and then we're going to mask this area off again. This red stage is going to be painted after we've done the gold here, but after it's been lacquered. So it will get a sacrificial coat of lacquer once we finish this gold leaf, all the gold leaf logos, it'll get that sacrificial coat of lacquer. And then after that, we'll do any really fine touching up and put the red bit on the line there. So now I've just got to line up these square holes perfectly. And then I know that the center of this logo is going to be in the right place. Pretty good. Pin it down. We don't need to push it all the way to the edge because we're not going to paint this red anyway. So I'll keep that just there. And try and peel the backing off. Make sure the masking is good all the way around. <clears throat> Remember, we're not painting this red on the line just yet, so we should mask over those cuts Now we're ready for red. You didn't hear me drop paint all over the floor then. That was just a big one of your imagination. He says, treading in loads of gold paint. Right, so we'll apply the red. Again, just don't rush it. A little bit at a time. It's better to have to give it four light coats than make that first coat too heavy and cause you problems. I'm just gonna pick some of that gold paint up. Right. So that's the red stage done. Now, with these solvent-based acrylic paints, we get asked quite a lot of the time, how quick do we stencil over the paint? Um, or how long do you leave a stencil on? We leave stencils on for the shortest time we can get away with. And when you're only putting on a really fine amount of paint like we've just seen me do, I haven't paused the video, so you're watching this in real time. We will remove the stencil immediately. And it'll only be about three minutes and this will be ready for the black stage. Just going to pause you for a bit. Right, so we're now ready for the last part of the lower half of this logo. Same again, get these squares in the right place. Mm -hmm. 
Not there. It's pretty good. Press it down. We might have a bit of a problem here with this, but we quite have we quite often have to do tiny touch-ups before our final coat of lacquer, so we try not to worry too much. You can see this is struggling to get around the tube here. Make sure you press it down in all the edges. And mask it up. Then hit it with the black. Right, again, we won't leave this on here very long because that black will pretty much be dry already. Again, I haven't bothered pausing you. This is real time. Refresh that in a minute. That's Becky falling out of the spray booth. Pissed again. Now, when you're picking off these stencils, you need a knife that's just right. Not too sharp, not too blunt. This one's too blunt. Bear with me two seconds. Try again. That's better. If they're too sharp, they nick the paint as soon as you touch them. If they're too blunt, you have to have quite a few goes at lifting up the vinyl. And the more attempts you have, like I'm having with this W, the more chances you're gonna nick the paint. Nicking the paint is bad, but it happens. And if I get this all off without nicking the paint at all, I'll be very surprised, if I'm honest. Um, but again, we will be lacquering this, hopefully later today, and then tomorrow it'll get a flat back. And then any fine touching up that needs doing will be done at that stage. And then it'll get what we call a final flow coat of lacquer. So that has two benefits really. One, it gives us a get out of jail card now, if we make any slight mistakes. You know, for example, this white line here, compared to this white line here, it's the difference in thickness. 
and when I check in a minute I'm probably going to see that it's not supposed to be like that on their British Railways logo so I can sort that out after I've um, done the next stage so we have got Oh, that's all right. Well, I think that's pretty good. So the first time I show you guys on my YouTube channel how we do logos, looks like I managed not to nick it. So the next stage is to put the gold effect on the line. Um, I'm going to mix up our size that we use which is something that we've worked on for a very long time and it's our own little concoction so I'm going to mix that up and then I'll be ready to start the gold leaf on that line right we're ready for the gold to go on this now so we're just going to mask off the work that we've done the life of a painter you spend most of it sanding and then I guess the next biggest task you do is cleaning and then probably masking comes after that and then fourth down the line is where you can say you're a painter so all those painters out there really they know they're sanders or their maskers or their cleaners because painting is almost always just seconds every hour right so now we're ready for the size to go on actually no we're not we're ready for a gold what we do whenever we do gold leaf is we paint a gold base coat down first that's why I'm clearing mess up from the floor where I knocked over the gold earlier. So basically, we'll put a fine gold colour on there first. And what this does is it just helps lift the brightness of the gold leaf that little bit more. So we'll uh, put the gold base coat on. It doesn't fall apart in my hand. And then we go over that with the size, which is basically a glue and thinners mix that we have concocted that the gold leaf will stick onto. So that's the gold base down. Now we give it two coats of the size. So There's one. We wait about five minutes before we give it another coat. So I'm going to pause you for a minute. So this is our second and final coat of size.
in about five minutes time that's going to be ready to have the stencil taken off and the gold leaf applied so let me just show you around this bike this is obviously gold leaf that we'd already done so this is variegated gold leaf so it's been burnt basically and it gives you that quite interesting effect it has hot spots on the gold so yeah right so now we're ready to peel off this stencil which might be a little bit sticky and it'll leave us hopefully with a sharp edge where the size has been painted can see some sticky edges here, some residue from the um, masking vinyl. I'm not over worried about those because you'll see as this process goes on that when we degrease this, uh, when we use um, the cleaner that we use to get rid of the sticky residue, it will wipe the gold off. So the gold is going to stick on this residue just here um, but once we wipe it at the very end it will come off so basically we take our variegated leaf now this is the way around some people choose to have it but Ash wants a more subtle colouring so we're going to use it upside down he says, throwing it all over the floor. Basically, take the leaf and apply it over the size and grab the brush. And very carefully brush it ever so lightly to begin with so you make contact with the size the glue let's call it glue shall we it's much easier everyone understands what glue is and then once you know where you're going start applying slightly more pressure this is to force a good adhesion between the gold and the glue Which is obviously extremely important. And then once you're convinced, once you're absolutely sure you've got it pressed on, you have to step back and wait. So we will wait about 40 minutes for the glue to do its job. And then hopefully when we come back, we can fluff off, we all have a bit of fluffing, we can fluff off the excess gold and hopefully we'll be left with a fairly sharp looking line. We're going to have some edges here to clean up, I know that already. Hopefully we don't have too much more to clean up. So I'm going to pause you now and then in a split second of your time, we'll be back here revealing how our gold line looks. 
Right, so we've given the gold leaf about 35, 40 minutes to adhere to the glue. And now we're gonna do a little bit of fluffing. So basically, this is frustratingly wasteful, but you just have to accept that. And you use the brush and force it against the edges that you've glued down. As your view like, it's pretty good. Let's get you a little bit closer. And while you're doing this, you'll see the shape of the part you spray the glue on starting to appear. Now, you know what I explained to you about the sticky of the vinyl. This is obviously where the vinyl is sticky. So, I have some panel wipe on a cotton bud and that's how I get that off. Now I will say, it's not very often we're satisfied with the gold leaf effect the first time we do it. So we probably 70% of the time we will feel that we have to do some second stage gold leaf just to get the edges the way we want them, get them nice and sharp. You can never get gold leaf as sharp as paint edges. You know, you're, you're dreaming if you think you can. There are ways to do that with certain paint jobs um, where you can airbrush at the next stage around the outside of the gold leaf. If you can use a drop shadow, for example, if the paint job that you're doing will allow that this job would allow that because it's got this mottled effect. You could drop a nice little airbrush drop shadow around the outside of here and that would really crisp up the edge of your gold leaf. But we're hoping we don't have to do that on this one. Um, and this is, remember, this is just the rough outline of the line, the line, try and say it properly, on this logo because we're gonna drop all of the red effect in after this has had a lacquer. A little bit more panel wipe on this cotton bud. I'm not satisfied with the white around this British Railways lettering either, so we're gonna do redo that after its next lacquer. So what I'm probably gonna do is extend this video a few minutes because I don't wanna put a video out on YouTube that you watch and then you finish the video thinking, well, that didn't look very good. So what we'll do is once I've finished making this good, we'll then get this cleaned up and ready for its next coat of lacquer which will be mainly a sacrificial lacquer. And then once we've done that lacquer and flatted it back, I'll set the camera back up where you are now. And as if by magic, you won't even know the seven hours of hard work that's gone into it in that time. And we'll finish this logo off. So we'll tidy up the British Railways logo and we put the red fine lines on the line. And then hopefully I'll be satisfied with how it looks. And you guys will get to see what we can do with gold leaf. For now, I think that's probably where I'm going to pause this video. I'll just finish a little bit of tidying up and then I'll uh, lacquer it. I might stick the camera on for the lacquer phase. Let's see how that goes. So 
So as you can see, we're getting there with this. Pretty happy actually. Come out well. Right, I'm going to show you guys the lacquer stage on this. We've got Becky behind the lens, so if it starts shaking, it's too much wine. Um, the noise is going to go up a bit. You're going to see one lacquer coat over this gold. And the idea of this lacquer coat is a sacrificial coat of lacquer so that when we flat it back to do our final bit of touching up, we don't damage any of the gold leaf.